Welcome back to NB Media and Content. In this modern classic review, I'll be featuring a 2001 Mercedes-Benz CLK 320 Cabriolet. And brand new in Australia, this would have set you back from around $130,000. However, these days, of course, thanks to depreciation, you can now pick one up for just under $20,000. And according to mechanics, CLKs are inexpensive to maintain. And to enthusiasts, the CLK series are becoming very desirable. And in this review, I'm gonna to explain to you why. So I'm gonna first run you for its model grades, talk about the design, the interior features, its options and technology, practicality, and then I'm going to drive it. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Nick and if you've gained value out of my content please give a like, share and subscribe. Now let's talk about a brief overview, the CLK was available as a coupe and a cabriolet and on your screen now is a list of different variants that were offered. Options and specifications vary depending on which model you chose and the CLK was also available with different external colours to choose from along with different wheel designs, interior colours and wood trim surrounds and again options vary depending on which model you chose and which trim line you went for. Today I'll be featuring a 2001 update series thanks to Unique Motor Garage. They specialise in Mercedes-Benz vehicles and they are located in Petersham, New South Wales. If you would like to get in contact with them on your next car purchase, I've linked their details in the description below. Let's now move on to the design. So this generation CLK received the full headlight design. It also features the E-Class radiator grille with the star on the bonnet and on the windscreen, a single wiper. And as this example is an update series, it received body colored bumper bars instead of the plastic cladding. And if we move towards the side view of the CLK, this example is also equipped with the 17 inch five hole alloy wheels. Whereas as standard, they came with 16 inch wheels, indicators on the wing mirrors and body colored side skirts, as well as pillarless windows. Whereas the coupe version came with B pillars in the center. So the cabin is more airy, even with with the roof up. Let's now move on to the rear design of the CLK Cabriolet. So at the back you have W210 E-Class styled rear tail lights, which are halogen. Up at the top here you have this cover for the black soft top roof, which is stored in that section there, as well as rollover protection. So you can hold a button down and these rollover bars will appear, protecting your rear passengers from an accident. Body colored rear bumper bars, as this is an update series, as well as a single rear exhaust. This generation CLK took design elements from the 1993 Coupe concept CLK, which was a very futuristic looking car at the time, especially when it launched at the Geneva Motor Show over 30 years ago. This generation CLK, it was built around a W202 C-Class platform, but it was styled like a W210 E-Class. It introduced a new curvy design for Mercedes as previous models were boxy and looked very traditional. Let's now move on to the interior. So before you climb inside, you have a remote key, central locking, and if you hold down unlock, that will activate the summer feature where all of the windows will go down automatically and if you hold lock it will do the same thing in reverse so all the windows will go up now let's talk about the cabin design so overall it does feel like a car from the late 1990s early 2000s as you would expect so it is safe to say it does feel outdated but what I do like about this generation CLK it featured a lot of burl walnut timber trim going all the way along the dashboard in sight of your driving view which makes the cabin feel very special and it's a really nice design feature which I think should be featured in in more newer Mercedes-Benz models. It also has timber trim in the center, on the doors, and surrounding the air conditioning controls. And to get comfortable behind the wheel, the seats offer plenty of electric adjustment. The steering offers manual reach adjustment. And you do have a clear driving view when the roof is down. However, with the roof up, visibility is a little bit impaired, but I'm sure over time you will get used to it. Moving on to key features, all 320s received full electric seat adjustment with memory electric chairs, both for the driver and passenger. It also has cruise control and a speed limiter on this stalk here. Single zone air conditioning, electric windows with electric mirror controls, and the Mercedes-Benz Audio 10 radio cassette player. In terms of features, you have AM, FM, CD, and a six stacker CD changer in the boot, as well as a six speaker sound system. And when the CLK was new, it was available with other optional extras like front and rear parking sensors, satellite navigation. The facelift CLKs built after 2000 received a multi-function steering wheel lifted from the W210 E-Class rather than a plastic one from the early CLK and SLK models along with the same analog gauge cluster featuring a digital speedometer, a fuel consumption reader and the car's servicing information which was state of the art at the time. And to activate the roof you just hold the red button down and when the roof gets to this position here and that folds close you just twist 
and lock it into place and then the roof is closed. And lastly, moving on to practicality. The passenger side, you have an airbag and as a result, the glove box is quite tiny. I don't know exactly what you can put in there. It also has small door pockets on the side. You can't really fit anything as well. However, you do have decent storage in the center here. And there is another tab here, which reveals the optional Nokia phone holder. In the center, there's a little pop-out tray, which you can remove. And lastly, you have a 12 volt socket, ashtray, and even a spot here for a brand new iPhone. This generation CLK also features two rear seats for occasional use and small children. And in terms of other key features, there are matte pockets behind the seats, as well as a fold down armrest. And when you push the lever, the seat automatically retracts forward. And that makes it easy for passengers climbing into the back. Let's now move on to the boot space. So to open it, you just push this and the boot opens. So compared to the coupe version, the Cabriolet was slightly compromised in terms of capacity, but there is still 350 litres with the roof raised and 237 litres with the roof down. And as you can see, it provides a nice wide opening. And if you are carrying a bulkier item like a suitcase, for example, you can slide this down. And in terms of other key features, I see you have a first aid kit on the left hand side, as well as the factory CD changer that can fit six CDs. And CLKs come with a full-size spare tire as well, including a toolkit. And it's also nice to see this car features all of its original factory literature, owner's manuals, the original floor mats, service history, and a service booklet, including the remote key, which isn't too common to see with cars in this age bracket. Let's now talk about the powertrain. So this engine block is the M112 3.2 litre naturally aspirated V6. It's very similar to the M113 V8 engine you would find in the CLK 430 and the CLK 55 AMG. It produces 160 kilowatts and 310 newton meters of torque. This engine is also paired to a five-speed automatic gearbox with manual override. So that means this features manual shifting and all of its power is sent to the rear wheels. And both these V6 and V8 powertrains have been proven to be very reliable according to Mercedes specialists. Nothing major really goes wrong with them. So if the engine bay out of the way, let's now see how it performs on the road. It doesn't feel like an outdated car to drive. The powertrain still feels fairly modern considering it was developed over 25 years ago. The only thing that makes it feel like a traditional Mercedes, it doesn't have a rack and pinion steering setup. It's a recirculating ball setup. And as a result, this was never as engaging to drive as a BMW 3 Series. But for a long distance journey, the CLK is definitely the car I would pick over the BMW 3 Series or even if you were going to drive this every day because in terms of refinement this is a better car and if you do put your foot down it is very responsive so you do have instant acceleration considering this is naturally aspirated and in terms of fuel consumption you'll be averaging around 13 litres per 100 and that will drop down to around 7 to 8 litres on the freeway which I think is pretty good and not really far off from a modern day car. And it is worth mentioning I used to own a CLK 320 as well as other Mercedes-Benz models with the M112 engine block and in terms of maintenance all I ever did was just general wear and tear like brakes, tyres, oil changes and if anything major came up, engine mounts, transmission service which I still consider to be wear and tear. It only gets expensive when you're playing catch up with the maintenance and because these powertrains are so reliable nobody ever really takes care of them properly and if you do buy one with a lack of service history or it doesn't really feel that good to drive the suspension's a little bit wobbly or whatever it may be that's when these cars get expensive. In terms of the way this car feels overall with a V6 or a V8 it's more like a muscle car, a German muscle car, rather than a sports car like a BMW. So those are my short driving impressions. Now let's wrap up this video with a verdict. So as a wrap up, what do I think overall about the CLK 320? Well, in my experience, they are very special to own. And for a classic car, they are inexpensive to maintain if you find the right example. And to buy a convertible under $20,000 with this level of refinement, there aren't any other options available. So I hope you enjoyed the film. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.